for the little story, Constantinos is uh, representing the AcubeSat team today. Is working at the, I mean, is a student at the Aristotle University uh, in Tes Tes Thessaloniki in Greece. I hope I pronounced it right. And they have a three U CubeSat uh, hosting a biological experiment. So this is very cool uh, with the pressurized containers. We, we we would love to hear you uh, to hear more about that uh, concern us how you're managing all this and what's the room of open space over there. Okay. Uh, hi. I hope you can hear me. So. Perfect. Uh, Thank yeah. Okay, great. You caught me a bit unprepared, to be honest. So, All right, no? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna mute my phone and get started right away. So, uh, no problem, yeah, the Saloniki, as you as you very correctly said. Uh, so this is our project. Uh, some of you may remember us presenting it last year in uh, OSW 2019. So uh, this is a bit of a progress update on what happened since then and uh, what we've done with our project. So. Uh, this is our CubeSat, this is our mission, this is our team, uh, about 40 students, uh, mostly undergraduate students from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, as well as some other universities around the world. Uh, so we are developing a CubeSat mission. We've been developing this since uh, 2018, this uh, specific mission. Uh, our target was to enter the Flyger satellite program by the European Space Agency, and this year, in February 2020, uh, we managed to get into this program. Uh, so we're going to see a little bit about uh, more information about this uh, as we move on. So, uh, as you know, this year has been a little bit hard for everyone. So, uh, we were working mostly remotely. Uh, you can see sometimes we did go to our uh, beloved laboratory, but uh, most of our work was done in Discord, actually. Unfortunately, it's not open source, but uh, this, uh, this model of having rooms and being able to simulate this uh, coffee break style between meetings and not just having uh, the typical Zoom or big blue button sessions where uh, everyone goes and then everyone leaves and they say nothing uh, to uh, to each other uh, all day. So uh, this was a very nice experience for us. Uh, but let's get started with the technical stuff. Uh, I think most people are interested in this. So this is our CubeSat, a three unit CubeSat. Its mission is a biological experiment, as Red said. So uh, we're starting gene expression on uh, yeast strains on uh, eukaryotic cells on Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells. So these are cells that uh, have a genome similar to, or uh, with results that can be uh, also applied to human cells. So our final uh, target is to extrapolate those resu results for human biology in space. Uh, our system is a combination of uh, commercial of the cells and in-house subsystems. Uh, we'll see more about this in the next slides. Uh, we're estimating our lots in uh, three years from now, I believe. And uh, as part of the open source uh, philosophy that we're trying to follow, uh, we have started uploading parts of our critical design review, uh, which we had to deliver uh, as part of our participation in the Flyger Satellite Program. So if you visit this link, I don't think it's, it may be clickable uh, for viewers, I'm not sure. Uh, so if you visit this link, we, you'll see that we've already uploaded some documents, uh, whatever we are allowed to, pub to publish, and we'll continue. Uh, updating and even uploading more uh, in the next days, months, years. So uh, this is our satellite. You can see the solar panels. You can see the, the heart of our satellite, essentially. Uh, this is our, uh, our experiment. This is our payload. Uh, this is where everything is hosted. And these are our subsystems. And here you can see in a little bit more detail. So let's get started right away. Uh, first is the, the sense unit, the payload, what we call. So. Uh, this is the, the pressurized container that uh, Red mentioned before. Uh, the payload vessel, this is one atmosphere. This is uh, uh, the air that is needed for the cells to survive. We put those cells in a microfluidic zip, so this thing right here. Uh, you can have a sensor scale, it's about uh, this big. So this is a, a new development made by us. You can even see the designs here in this repository. Uh, we take photos like this one. A little bit different, this is a bit outdated. Uh, and using this photo, we see cells that uh, fluorescence, uh, so they generate light. And then based on this light, we can see how uh, its gene is expressed. So we can have very large scale uh, results for space. This is uh, a very large scale mission compared to the previous one. So uh, we took the ideas from previous missions and we kind of multiplied them, but in a smaller uh, size scale, but larger uh, result scale if I can say that. Uh, and this is, the idea is to provide a modular 
uh, a modular experiment that can be used also by other missions and very quickly uh, and in a very low cost uh, extract results in space uh, for biological aspects. So more technical information about this can be found on our previous presentation, uh, I believe. Uh, but I'm going to just uh, move forward and move to the other subsystems. I'm sure many people here are interested in the communications aspect of things. So uh, I'm going to put a little bit more of attention to this subsystem. So for communications, we are using the Satnox Comps board, which is currently under development by the Libre Space Foundation. Uh, so this, this platform is essentially an SDR board uh, that supports operation in two frequencies at the same time. So the first frequency is the, uh, the S-band, the 2.4 gigahertz. We have a custom patch antenna that is designed to support this. Uh, that's designed to support this uh, with a high data rate for our payload data. And then for our more robust link that doesn't need uh, any pointing accuracy, uh, we are using a deployable antenna, a dipole antenna. This is based on AppSat's deployable antenna design, but with a few modifications. Uh, so, and it's in the UHF band. Of course, all data here uh, will be accessible to any radiometers or any users of the Satnox network. So. Uh, the details of the antenna design, uh, the details of the packet structure that we're using, the CCSD, SCSS packet structure, uh, these are all available in our CDR. So, uh, in theory, everyone uh, will be able to receive any, any data. Uh, again, also as part of the Satnox network. So, moving on to some uh, more subsystems. Uh, this slide may take some time for you to load, but don't worry. Uh, for the ADCS and OBC, these are subsystems we develop in-house. So we have a double-sided ADCS and OBC board due to size constraints. You can see these are the, the both sides. Okay, uh, and uh, again for the for the OBC, a little uh, fact that I'd like to pay attention to is that we are using a radiation-tolerant microcontroller by Microchip. So this is the SAM V71 uh, Q21 RT, I believe. So this is a radiation-tolerant model, which means it's on the expensive side of things, but the, the positive thing is that there is a non-radiation tolerant version. So in the interest of modularity uh, and uh, reusability, someone who wants to uh, use this platform on their own mission, if they want a low, a low cost approach, they can use the non-radiation tolerant version. Uh, and it's exactly the same. Uh, and if someone wants to do some uh, interplanetary CubeSat missions, for example, uh, like we heard in a previous uh, talk, uh, they can go for the low risk approach and use the radiation tolerant version. So, and again, the schematics and the, the software uh, are available on our GitLab repository. So moving on to some other subsystems. Uh, here we are starting to go into the more uh, code side of things. So uh, due to, to lack of uh, engineering hands available, I would say, uh, we are procuring these subsystems uh, as codes components. So the EPS and the, the structure are uh, mostly from manufacturers like Enduraset and, uh, and ISIS. And again, you can find more information about uh, trajectory or analysis or power budget, for example. We've, we've made kind of a dynamic uh, power budget in this, uh, in this link as well. Now, another aspect, uh, another aspect of the program, of the Flyer Satellite program that we would like to share with the community uh, is the, the systems engineering side. So this is something we don't often see in open source projects. Uh, in the, the more agile side of the of the spectrum, I would actually say. So this is again something we've we've tried to share, and I will start from the the requirements, uh, which is ideally the the baseline, the, the starting point of of every space mission. So for the requirements, we've uploaded our entire specification. It's uh, about two hundred requirements, I believe, uh, and again, everyone can uh, everyone can access it. Uh, and we've made this, this cool requirements tree, so you can see which requirements have parent requirements and child requirements, which, again, was not easy for us to find. Uh, we move on to more analysis. So, uh, for example, we have the, the failure mode effects analysis, uh, the FMEA, some of you may know it. So, uh, we list every component, we list in what way it can fail. Uh, this is pretty standard in, uh, in aerospace. And, uh, again, you can find this analysis, uh, this analysis online. It's been extremely useful because we don't just take stabs in the dark, uh, hoping that, okay, a satellite will work, but uh, we see its component, how it can fail, and how much risk it can pose. This uh, is a bit time consuming. This analysis takes a long time, but I think in the end it is worth it. Uh, moving on, some more uh, funky aspects. Uh, our hardware in the loop testing platform, HIL uh, platform as we call it. So uh, we've placed a microcontroller in our lab, and everyone can uh, program it uh, from our team remotely. 
uh, they can submit a, a merge request uh, in GitLab and the code gets executed in the microcontroller. So for example, uh, our implementation of VCSS services uh, is automatically tested on this microcontroller. So we can see, okay, if I get something that works on my laptop, does it also work on the ARM architecture? Uh, and how fast is it? So you can see here we have some very rudimentary be benchmarks. Uh, so again, this is something uh, that is close to the, the, the verification aspect uh, of what we need to do. And then we have this uh, more operational uh, aspect, these more operational plans and diagrams uh, that explain the, the function of our satellite in detail. Uh, and again, this is something that is constantly being uh, updated and we try to keep it uh, as public as we can. So, uh, thank you for, for watching us. So, uh, again, uh, we're, we're trying to keep our developments and uh, our, uh, our designs uh, as open source as we can, uh, given all the constraints and the uh, commercial equipment uh, that we are using. Uh, and we hope that uh, many other teams uh, can use our information in the future. Uh, as we've used information from other teams in the past. So, for example, the, the AppSat mission by LSF uh, has been a major starting point, uh, even unconsciously, I would say, uh, for many of, uh, for lots of our progress right now. So, yeah, thank you. Very nice, Konstantinos. I think that's your uh, Well done. Thanks for jumping in quickly. <laughs> thank you. All some level of uh, of details actually in a so short presentation. Uh, we feel like we were in your team. Uh, this <laughs> seems like very challenging. This like this cell in the middle is taking so much room, so uh, it's going to be a challenging uh, op challenging operations, I believe. Um, maybe we have the first question from Michael, uh, just to test your microphone if you want. <laughs> but if you have questions over here, am I in the public chat? Yeah. I shared your link on GitLab. This is nice. Okay. So, do you have biologists in your team, Stantinos? Uh, oh yeah, we, we we do have a lot of them uh, actually. Uh, the people who started this this experiment were medicine students. Uh, then now they are uh, postgraduate bioengineering students, I believe, and we have yeah many people from these departments, uh, and they, they need to have a very close collaboration. Uh, we have a very, a very close collaboration uh, with the rest of the systems engineering disciplines, I would say. I can imagine. Um, so there's a question from Samuel, I can ask it. Uh, what do you, uh, he's curious, so what do you think uh, you will expect to find in the gene expression of uh, yeast? And, uh, and do you guys have a hypothesis uh, so far? Yeah, uh, I am also not a bio guy. Uh, so I'm, I won't give you a 100% correct answer. Uh, now so again, guy either, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, the the, the point is, uh, the the point is to to find that there are five pillars uh, of human uh, biology and human medicine space. So I don't remember all of them, but uh, it's the lack of gravity, uh, it's the lack of uh, it's the radiation. So uh, we want to find how uh, how this all these space conditions. Uh, can have an effect on, on, on cells and on genes. I don't know if any studies have uh, done on this scale yet, so uh, maybe the answer is we don't know, uh, because I think the, the largest amount of studies done is for, uh, uh, it's for the, the large scale, uh, the, the human, for example, the twin study by NASA. So we're, st we're trying to see if and what effect this has on cells. We've already done some radiation tests to cells, for example, and we see that, uh, of course, the, the DNA can change. There is, there is DNA damage. Yeah, yeah. So uh, okay. maybe we the answer is we don't know. know. What, what, what would be the impact on human cells? There? That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the thing. Right? Yeah. That's, uh, that was the question from Samuel. He's typing again. So uh, that's um, what, what's the most challenging to, to open source in, the, in, your, in your project so far? Uh, you mean uh, from the programmatic or the technical part? Whichever, what is the most challenging? The one that you know keeps you up at night when you, when you think about it. <laughs> well, uh, a lot of things I would say. So, for grams, for example, for structures, uh, there's been a lot of work, and uh, it's been really hard to uh, to share uh, because you're, we're using a commercial structure, uh, and we're doing our analysis on commercial structure. Even if we do our analysis for the uh, for our vessel itself. Uh, we we really need to 
to spend time uh, to to correct it and uh, find everything that is confidential and upload it. And uh, this, uh, these last days we tried to to upload our CDR and uh, we have to pay attention to even to every little value. Uh, if some manufacturer shared it with us with an NDA, uh, we cannot upload it. So yeah, it, it takes some time, but it's yeah, worth yeah. it in the end. You have some locks, but uh, you, you need to step over there. That's good. That's good. Anyone has uh, another question to Constantinus? Anyway, Constantinus has been uh, in the channels for, for some time. He's very active. You can always find him there. And yeah. uh, wh when is your launch planned uh, so far, Constantinus? Yeah, our launch is for 2023. Uh, again, okay. this depends on the launch opportunity, so nothing is standard yet, but this is the general idea. So you don't know the rocket yet, are you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 2023, we'll look, we'll look for that. Uh, looking forward. Good luck on the development. And, yeah, thank uh, you very much. And uh, keep us posted. It's uh, it was good to have some uh, bio <laughs> bio satellites in orbit. Like it's yeah, a yeah. mini lab. You're saying <laughs> we'll that's great. Yeah, it's it's called lab on a chip. This is the <laughs> the, the fancy <laughs> term. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, Constantinos, thank you very much. Yeah, we thank you very much. Call you again. <laughs> You can turn on your camera, Michael Brady, in the meantime. <laughs> Mantos is